G'day everybody and welcome back to American Truck Sim. So here we are sitting here in our Kenworth W900 and we are doing a special transport job. It's the second check, uh, special transport job that I've done in American Truck Sim. I've done them in Euro Truck Sim but uh, I will explain why I didn't put the other, the previous one up um, as we go along. The W900 probably not really suitable for this uh, it is a 550 horsepower however it has got a 10 speed um, which is probably not appropriate for such a heavy transport but uh, we'll see how we go we've got some uh, tech parts here and uh, she's quite a lot uh, wide load we are heading from uh, Scoro in New Mexico down to Tuscan in Arizona and uh, heading into Tuscan or nearing Tuscan we do have some some pretty windy and precarious roads to go through so I was hoping that this would be uh, done during the daytime and at the moment it is 7.55 p.m. which means that we are going to be running at night um, that's going to make it even worse when we get down to those areas where uh, uh, where we've got barriers and uh, and hairpin turns and stuff like that. So let's get underway and see how we go. I can't guarantee you that this will be an error-free transport, but we will see how we go. may be a slow job I may do some uh, some editing and cut some sections out so that uh, I don't bore you absolutely silly it's quite a long trailer and it's got that dolly on the back as well which makes it even longer so it's gonna be an interesting one Let's have a look at, uh, we'll get our bearings on just how big this trailer is, uh, this load is and how much it hangs over the side once we, uh, once we get out on the road and straighten up a little bit. Okay. I am going to take my time on this, it's not the kind of job that you want to actually rush. Hi fans. And we've got a state trooper who's going to be escorting us today. Uh, that's actually pretty cool. I think uh, in Euro Truck Sim I've done quite a few of these and I've always had a, a pilot vehicle as opposed to a police vehicle so maybe that's how they do it in the States. For those of you who haven't done a heavy transport or a special cargo transport, uh, you don't need to stick to the rules. There is no um, no stopping for lights or anything like that. So, all right. So what we're going to need to do is go very wide here, I think. Let me get that around that corner without taking a traffic light out and we need to get back into this lane before uh, before I get told off for being in the wrong lane which does happen yeah so you don't need to stick to road rules um, your escort vehicle as you can see there's uh, there's police that run between the intersections and uh, block off the roads and block off any oncoming traffic um, our escort vehicle will swerve out into the middle of the road to um, to sort of move traffic on the opposite side of the road over to give us a little bit more room but you'll see that as we go so I did do a record a previous uh, heavy transport or a previous special transport in American Truck Sim for you guys to watch and 
That was a great trip. I really enjoyed it. It was pretty tough because we had some. Uh, it was pitch black again, and we had some uh, some hairpins and stuff like that to go through. But um, unfortunately, when I went to do the edit, the sound had disappeared. So, all right, it looks like we've got enough to be able to sit right in the middle of the lane here and still not hit any traffic and still not hit anything on the side. I don't know how that will go when we get to uh, when we get to the windy bits, but for now that's okay. Our maximum speed limit that we can do is about 40 miles. Is is 40 miles an hour, I think, as far as I'm aware. So this is where the um, the 10 speed is probably not going to like it. Is doing these hills and stuff, so. We're going to have to do some pretty rapid and uh, pretty intense gear changes here, I think. Hopefully I can do it with the 10 speed. We should have plenty of room on the side of this. Yes, we do. Just keep it over to the left a little bit. Uh, we can at least see our trailer, uh, see our load on the back at the moment. Um, when it gets dark, we probably won't be able to see that, so... Alright, let's get some speed up now. So I hope everybody's well. I hope you, you're all, uh, <coughs> excuse me, keeping well, um, and that none of you or none of your family have been affected by what's going on at the moment. Although I don't think there's anybody uh, in the world that hasn't that, that doesn't know somebody who's been affected by it. So it's still a pretty nasty thing that's going on there the whole COVID-19 and uh, at this point in time there doesn't seem to be uh, any real sight to an end to it so we can all only do what we can do try and stay at home as much as possible make sure that we don't um, you know minimize our risk of coming into contact with everybody because uh, it sounds like a pretty nasty pretty nasty thing to get so I've seen things like the uh, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson he's been in intensive care although he's getting uh, the news said this morning that he's getting better so you know it doesn't discriminate this disease so just make sure that you all stay safe because safety and avoiding people and uh, avoiding going out as much as possible is the best thing to do and it gives you an excuse to sit down and game. Which reminds me, I, d I did find it quite funny actually. I read an article from the um, from WHO, which is the World Health Organization, the other day. And uh, in the previous years, the World Health Organization declared um, gaming as a mental disorder gaming addiction as a mental disorder meaning you know what we do what we do on a daily basis which is you know game whether it be simulation or or whether it be multiplayer or whatever and they made a declaration and uh, declared that gaming was a mental illness recently they released another article that declared that gaming was one of the best ways we'll just take our time over here that gaming was one of the best ways to spend your time during this period of lockdown um, to keep your mind active and keep you sane so I found that quite amusing that um, you know one minute they're declaring that it's a bad thing the next minute they're declaring that uh, in this situation that it's a good thing so I think us as gamers should revel in that fact that uh, you know, and we can remind people. Well, hang on a minute. The World Health Organization said that that was the uh, 
the best way to to deal with the isolation and and stuff like that for your mental health so yeah i found that really interesting it was uh it's, it's typical it's like everything really isn't it that uh it, it's it's a contradiction but uh it's they make these decisions to suit themselves all right you can see that uh, our escort vehicle moved over into the middle of the road to just to warn that car that oncoming traffic that uh that a wide load was coming through and to make sure that they moved over as much as they could and you do see the traffic move over which is pretty cool yeah so finally uh, the World Health Organization has endorsed gaming I'm sure that when all of this is over um, we will probably find that they will condemn it again but uh, let's enjoy it while we have it So as you can see now it's getting dark it makes it a little bit harder to see where our load is in comparison to the road and what's on the side of the road and stuff uh, we're lucky that our that our beacons are, are lighting up the load so that gives us a little bit of a, 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 a little bit of a view of it but Try and get ourselves up to 40 miles an hour and try and stick to that until we get to any corners or anything. So far so good on the uh, on the 10 speed in the W900. It doesn't seem to be struggling too much. Although I did have to manipulate it going up hill before. And do some pretty rapid gear changes to try and keep up. I'll bring our stats up so that we can see what's going on. So we've got a massive tech part. It's uh, 99,208 pounds. It's quite a, quite a big one, quite a big one. It's expected on uh, Tuesday to Friday, 2.27. So there's really no absolute light rush on this. And that's lucky because you can only do 40 miles an hour, so. So at the moment uh, we're looking at uh, another 7 hours 24 minutes at this speed 326 miles so still got quite a way to go we'll close that off now because we don't need it I did fill up so we've got a full tank I did fill up before we left so <clears throat> before I came online and we're doing this. Uh, we're doing this trip uh, on truck books for Farmers Transport Inc. So we've got plenty of room there. That's good. In fact, we probably have enough room just to stay in the middle of this lane. Uh, the amount that that traffic moves over. So I'm pretty sure that that's a state trooper that's um, that's escorting us, and I'm not overly sure um, in regards to jurisdictions and things like that over in the states. But um, I was just wondering what happens when we cross the border, whether we continue to main, uh, to continue to keep that uh, state trooper. It did in the last one, but. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to know what happens with jurisdictions and stuff like that because I thought these guys couldn't, um, they couldn't cross the borders or anything, but uh, that might actually just be for police work and stuff like that. Um, there's probably some sort of exemption or something when it comes to um, a special transport like this one that allows them to cross the border and follow you all the way through. I think uh, driving a an escort vehicle for a special transport would probably get a little 
uh, mundane and boring very very quickly I do like driving I do like driving in real life in fact I love doing road trips and stuff like that which is part of the appeal of <coughs> excuse me of driving um, trucks in and stuff but because I do like getting out on the open road and driving but uh, but probably not a long trip at 40 miles per hour I'm used to going a little bit faster than that a bit of tumbleweed there's a lot of cops on this road as well okay so it looks like up here we're continuing on on the 60 So, so the escort vehicles the escort vehicles always maintain a distance in front of you um, however you do still need to keep your eyes on changes in speed limit like that like that speed limit we were doing 40 miles an hour the speed limit reduced to 35 miles an hour so he did slow down but uh, in the scheme of things at the moment we're doing 25 miles an hour and as I accelerate as I accelerate up, that escort vehicle will still maintain that distance until I go over 40 miles per hour. And then I will uh, start gaining on the escort vehicle. Now you do get into trouble if you... I'm not sure whether you lose any points on your trip or anything, but you do get into trouble if you do get too close to the vehicle in front and if you do get too close to the vehicle behind not that you could do that with the vehicle behind anyway uh, unless you're trying to reverse out of a situation I guess so they always do maintain that distance but as soon as we go over our allowed speed limit which is 40 miles an hour you do start gaining and you do get a little bit close they also have lane changing procedures for those that haven't done one of these uh, and when changing lanes the front escort vehicle will change lanes you have to stay in your lane and wait for the rear vehicle to change lanes and when the rear vehicle changes lanes you change lanes and that's how the procedure goes if you don't do it that way you do get in trouble for that again I am not overly sure whether or not um, you lose points for that if you don't do it correctly but it's an interesting um, it's an interesting way to do trucking most definitely uh, and it's fantastic that SCS even put this in here um, the, the, the coding that must have been required to do this as an add-on is, is awesome so if you don't have it I would highly recommend that you do do it you wouldn't uh, that you do get it you wouldn't just be doing spare well but maybe you would uh, certainly for myself I wouldn't be doing special transport all the time uh, because we also do have the heavy haul DLC which allows you to just do normal truck runs but with heavier loads and that's pretty awesome as well but um, every now and again to get in here and to do a, uh, a trip like this and a special transport is awesome it's also worth noting that with special transport there are only certain areas that you can uh, pick up these special transport jobs from so I think there's maybe 11 or 12 towns and cities that you can uh, that you can take special transport from I may be wrong there but I think it's only about that so all right, another vehicle coming up here. Sorry about that bang. I was just getting myself some water. So we're just gonna take it a little bit easy past all of these vehicles.
We do at least have quite a bit of uh, shoulder there, which, which is absolutely fantastic. Gives us a lot of room on the, uh, on the right-hand side. Excuse me while I have a sip. Entering show low. Okay, so we do have traffic in front of us here, but that's traffic that was previously, uh, that was already driving in front of us that we've kind of caught up with. Okay. So that traffic will zoom off when they get into a higher speed limit and they won't be in our way, so. those posts on the side of the road and sort of stick to the more to the edge of this lane coming through here with all these posts and uh, lamp posts and stuff through here so and we can see we've got the police blocking off that section there Now you don't want to stray too far from your lane, like I wouldn't want to just drive with the uh, with the line down the centre of the truck because you, you will get told that uh, you need to stay in your lane or stay in between your escort vehicles if you get too far over. But I think what we've got here is probably enough. Now I don't like the height of those, uh, those dangly lamps on that lamppost, but we got past them. There we go, see it's telling us to keep the cargo between the escort vehicles there because I got a little bit too far over. Okay, so we've got a steep descent coming up now. Which is going to be interesting because we need to make sure that uh, that we do only run at 40 miles per hour and don't go over that. yep it's probably there's probably more gap there than it actually looks like when you go past a truck like that it's a little bit of hilly work which is probably not as good for a 10 speed as it would have been for an 18 speed but the Kenworth seems to be doing all right so we use our Jake brake going down here to try and maintain some sort of speed. The last thing that you want to do is get into a situation at the bottom of the hill or where you can't stop, so. There we go. Okay, so here we are, we're getting into the really windy stuff now. And this is no drama if we don't get any oncoming traffic, but when we get oncoming traffic, that's when it becomes a little bit of a problem. Thankfully, it's not too dark out there. When there is no traffic coming, I will take advantage of that and stay relatively wide. It looks like we're also going to be going downhill a bit as well, so. Yeah, 
you know and kudos to those truck drivers that do this type of stuff in real life uh, especially in situations like this So we've got a cliff face on the right hand side and we've got a barrier on the left hand side. Two lanes which isn't too bad. And interestingly enough it looks like we've got a service station halfway around this um, halfway around this hairpin. Okay, well, this isn't too bad. It's not as bad as the previous trip that I recorded going through here. Alright. Bit of fuel there. That's a nice little fuel station, isn't it? Here we go, as you can see our load is all the way over the other side of the road so we do need to be really careful uh, in regards to any oncoming traffic and we have a truck coming up now that I can see in the distance there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow right down and I'm just going to take my time running through here so that we don't damage this load. That was a little precarious. I'm not sure whether I ac actually scraped the load a little or whether I didn't there. Uh, it may have been the verge. Alright, so we've got even worse stuff coming up now. This is, a, this is pretty interesting. Makes for a, uh, for a very interesting and tough trip. So what I'm going to do here, I think... probably drop my gear as much as I possibly can without overdoing it like I did just then and hope that we don't come across another vehicle coming around here come on don't do that might actually just crawl up here in second gear. I nearly had a, a bit of a gear failure there, which could have been absolutely disastrous for us. But luckily I recovered. Alright, so keep my eye on that. I'm not sure how far over the road we are there. Thankfully we've got quite a bit of verge before the cliff face here. Into third gear. Yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of lucky we didn't get any oncoming traffic there and that we do have a little bit of verge. Alright, up into fourth gear. But we're still not out of the woods yet. Okay, so this is, this is where it's a problem. We've got a, uh, we've got a barrier on the right hand side. No oncoming traffic, so let's get around here as quickly as we possibly can. Get up into fifth gear. I don't think I want to go any higher than fifth gear for this. And we've got another hairpin here, so again. Let's hope that there's no traffic coming the other way. If there is, I'm going to probably drop it down into first gear and just crawl at a very, very slow pace. So. Oh, all right. 
right, so this is this is where it becomes a problem. Okay, thankfully, that truck kind of stopped there. And he put his hazards on. Thank you. Lucky. One more bend up here, but we've got a bit of shoulder here. So... And luckily for us, it's uh, daylight, the sun is rising, so that made it even better for us. We're nearly out of the woods. So interestingly enough, the uh, truck at home event that SCS were doing, uh, it has finished up. We've seen uh, people like Farmer Klein doing convoys and stuff like that for the truck at home event, which was pretty cool. Uh, here we go. Just, uh, just got to take my time through here. Let's see if we can squeeze past all this stuff, which we did. No worries. I'm just going to bring that mirror up for a sec. Yeah, so the truck at home event finished, uh, which was the hashtag truck at home. Um, some pretty interesting stats, like ev everybody who drives American and Euro trucks him really got into this. It was absolutely awesome. Uh, I think SCS ended up donating uh, around about 15,000 euros um, to frontline workers to assist frontline workers and I think that's the, that goes towards um, uh, protective gear and stuff like that for our frontline workers. I did manage to get some stats which they posted on their um, on their page. Hang on a sec. Which I will go through in a sec. I will just get this load around this corner. We've got plenty of room here. So here's one of those change lane maneuvers. So you wait until that, the vehicle at the back also changes lanes and then you're supposed to change lanes. But we were going around a corner so that was pretty quick like that. Yes, yeah, so anyway, back to the uh, truck at home. Uh, 994,149 deliveries. It's almost a million deliveries made by, uh, made by players in the truck at home event, which is absolutely awesome. And there's some even better stats than that once we get around this corner. Go nice and wide here. We've got plenty of room. There's nothing coming, so so we're okay. All right. Uh, five hundred and eighty-four million five hundred and sixty-four thousand six hundred and thirty-eight kilometers driven. How incredible is that? Nearly 600 million kilometers driven by players um, doing the truck at home event. And that was broken up between, I think they said, I um, can't remember how many players they put on it, but uh, nearly 600 million kilometers. That is absolutely incredible. I just thought I might share those stats with you because I found that it was, um, yeah, I just I just found it amazing how many kilometres were done, how many deliveries were done, and and just how much everybody got into it. It was absolutely brilliant. So there we go. We're coming uphill again now. So I might uh, put my foot down a little bit to try and speed up a bit I'm not sure how far how much further we've got to go on this delivery uh, another 101 miles which isn't too bad so it's definitely been an interesting trip so far um, it, it makes it very interesting when you uh, when you start dealing with all of these windy roads and hairpins and um, and nighttime driving and stuff, it's, it's been fun. 
All right, looks like we've got a pretty clear road here, so I'll probably see you when we get, uh, unless something happens, I'll probably see you when we get closer to our destination. Okay guys, we're nearly at our delivery point now. I think we're only oh, a couple of miles out, I think. What are we? 31 miles out. Not much happened in between uh, leaving you and coming back. It was just all uh, open road, relatively straight, wide shoulders and lots and lots of cactus. Which was nice to have that open road after, uh, after doing so many... Um, hairpins and stuff like that so not too far away from our delivery now I'll close that off and it looks like we're getting on the uh, highway here I think this is going to be actually pretty tight so I might be a little bit concerned about this one should be able to stay very wide let's see okay yeah we should have plenty of room here because we've got such a wide shoulder which is going to help us get around there easily lovely they are so long these trailers super long All right, we're around there. All right, uh, what's that? Changing lane maneuver is on its way. So that vehicle will pull over into the left. We should do anyway. And we'll wait, give it a little bit of time for the other vehicle, for the vehicle at the end. And as you can see, like I didn't pull over quick enough. I mean, the thing is, you can't see the rear escort vehicle with the load there and stuff. So you're not sure exactly when they do. So if you take a little bit of time, they do tell you off. But that's okay. Hopefully we won't lose any points for that. a little bit more open road let's try and get it up to 40 and get this load delivered it's been a pretty interesting trip the thing with these special transports are they um, they do take a little bit of time to do quite a bit of time to do but um, you know, that's to be expected you are only driving at 40 miles an hour and at the same time you you know you, you need to be very careful anyway so So far, it's been a nice trip and I've really enjoyed it. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, probably try doing a special transport trip in uh, Euro Truck at some point as well. So, here we go, we're changing lanes. Come on, lost that gear. Seem to do all right there. Okay, this is going to be a little bit tight here. Uh, should should have plenty of room. Okay, a little bit of creative gearing. swing wide and give ourselves plenty of room coming around this corner take it nice and slow take it nice and easy thank goodness for escort vehicles eh How are we going on the side of the bridge there? Okay. And here's our destination just up here on the right. Let's just slow down a little bit. 
Yep, we're coming through, fellas. Got the rail workers there. Watch that car to the left. And I am going to need to go wide here. So this escort vehicle should pull up. Yes, he does. And we will go around the corner here. Bring this load in here. Not sure whether I got far enough over to the left to pull into here, but it looks like we might be okay. There is a light pole there. But it looks like we've made it beautiful. Alright, what a trip, eh? What a trip. A lot of concentration. Uh, some precarious bits, but uh, we got there. Let's pull up here. Let's take it nice and easy pulling in here. Let's get out to this view, eh? And there we go, guys. Right, uh, turn him off. And uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that, uh, that special transport. There was a few precarious areas on the way through there, but they were quite fun to ride in. Luckily, we had a little bit more light than what I did in the previous one that I did. Um, but I will see you in the next episode of American Truck Sim or Euro Truck Sim or Farm Sim, depending on what I do. Uh, hit like if you enjoyed this and uh, thanks very much for watching. See you guys.